And do you want to say anything? Do you want to say anything? Okay, okay, Dr. Pipiujo, that's from your paper. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so um, the question is, where is um, how to revive um, Bama Research Society, the society that I mentioned in my um, talk. And so, then, well, basically, there are two, uh, two aspects. The first one is how to do practically. So what are the practical steps to achieve this uh, aim. Uh, the second one is related to um, the kind of uh, attitude that we have, we need, we should have. So, they, in terms of the attitude, I think we should have, a, 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 you know, the will, uh, not just one person, not just one institution, but various institutions actually coming together to make this uh, happen. This, in terms of the practical uh, practicalities, I think it's, uh, we would need support from Ministry of Education, all the uh, universities, uh, the, the University of Yangon and, and other universities as well as um, the support from uh, various rectors at various institutions. So, thank you very much for this uh, question. And, and of course, you know, as part of, we should, I think, consider this as a, as a, a project that would require working committees and various processes and things like that. So that's what I would like to uh, say. Uh, perhaps I should explain a little bit in Burmese as well. The question, yeah, the Jama presentation of my Pyotoare Burma Research Society or Belum Pian Biro or Revival Pian Biro Tutalu Yamale, Pian Biro Lopo, Le Lure, Lule Pyotoare, Lopo Aro, Jama and Amy and Bioma, so you know, Naku Gana Naku Shirabo, but Hama Gana or practicalities below stepped in a practical judge at the Lumio Logamale. Now the Kuaro, the attitude is sign up. Koye, the project, the Dilumio, Pianet di Tamo address, so you know, Belumio attitude in a Lule, Jama Patama, the Piotoare, Saram Nema Padare, the liberal outlook, but Lochinessa Nane, the freedom Yabu Adragule Lure, Nabjara Lochinessa Naule, Low Nimbo, Accounted for Nimbo, Lua Debo, Ari Lumio Gananaku and Nero Sinza to Amaboshe. Okay. I'd like to. Uh, okay, we have many questions. Um, I try to cover as many as we can, but I'd like to give the opportunity to uh, the, all the speakers. Now, um, I'd like to ask uh, the Dr. You know, Alex uh, Ruiz uh, Falquez uh, to answer that grammar question. Thank you, Venerable. Uh, so, there are three, three questions that are related. The first one is, how did you study Bali with teacher or not? So the question is a personal question, whether I studied with a teacher or not. In my personal history, I, I did, I actually studied Sanskrit first, Takatabata, Sanskrit. And because of that, Bali was very easy. There is another question that whether I think that Sanskrit is needed to understand Bali. Uh, it's, uh, basically, the answer is yes, but the, probably it's not needed, it's helpful, it's very helpful. There are many things that are helpful for studying Pali. If you are a, an Indian and you know Sanskrit, uh, learning Sinhalese and Burmese and Thai is very helpful. If you are Burmese or Thai, maybe learning Sanskrit is very helpful. Always depends on where you come from. So for, I would suggest that for Burmese students, students in Myanmar, if they can also learn Sanskrit together with Pali, 
but not only Sanskrit, also what is called Prakrit. Prakrit, that means different dialects of Prakrit or Middle Indic, that is very, very helpful. And another question is, how could I study about Pali to write and read the primary sources? So how, what do we do with the primary sources? How to study? I think in, in Myanmar, you are very lucky because there are many great scholars. So I would simply suggest to try to find a very competent teacher in Pali, in the commentaries and so on. I met many of them in Yangon, in Mandalay and elsewhere in Pokoku. And simply try to put the time and effort. It takes some time. We need to be patient. But over the years, we will, we will improve. So I would recommend patience and try to find a good teacher and read every day. Thank you. Adika Piora ro mere me khonga wa pali go ye nai phat nai so phelo lo ma ro se ane ra o ti se a piora ro me ma nai ma um pali chwan je ne se ai le shi de pali chan sa ni chwan je ne se ai le shi de a lo se a myo ko sha phi ro a ri se a ne ne sin phat pha de na phat phi ro we pan san se da bo a ri a ri chan sa Aku, so now I'd like to invite him to the tent to uh, to answer one question. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, the question is, uh, did the location of the Sabapana in, in the outer city of Mandalay have any, any impact on social cohesion among lay community? If yes, uh, how? So I think it's a bit difficult to talk about social cohesion in um, monarchical times. I think, um, I mean, Myanmar society uh, during the time of uh, Minton, I mean, the Professor Tola would be uh, the expert on, on these issues, would, um, I mean, um, there, there was no, we can't, we can't really talk about social cohesion. It, we could possibly talk about social cohesion at, at the quarter level, but what does that mean, social cohesion, in, in, in a monarchical society? And, and uh, so I wouldn't, um, I mean, I don't think in any way there was any impact uh, on the way people perceive them, themselves uh, within their own community and with, uh, um, in relation with other communities. So. Um, yeah, we don't know. I mean, there's no records about how the, um, um, the Buddha's uh, Sabapana was perceived at that time. Uh, we know that, of course, people, like they do today, they go to the Kutoro and, and uh, uh, worship the Buddha and uh, pay respect to the Buddha, and, and, uh, but we don't know exactly what they thought and what, were, what, they were, uh, what were their experience uh, about it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Can I now ask uh, Dr. Pipiujo to answer some question? You have the question uh, I have chosen for you. Um, so <clears throat> the the question um, is coming from uh, uh, Paul Miet Wen, um, and it's about uh, please explain how Abhidhamma can be translated and applied to solve problems faced in daily life. Um, so when we say uh, translate or translate it, um, uh, yeah, we have to say uh, into which language first. Are you talking about uh, uh, into Burmese language or English language um, or, 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 or translate in terms of um, uh, you know, understanding uh, or interpretation? Um, but even with uh, translation into Burmese, uh, there are Abhidhamma terms which has been uh, kind of Burmanized uh, in, in the sense that used very widely in, in the society, in Yama society. Uh, so, Mita Karuna, Chitta, Chitta Sika, and things like that, without actually translating it into uh, Burmese language per se. So that's one thing. But when we look at uh, apply, um, so if we take uh, translation in terms of apply, uh, um, Abhidhamma, then Abhidhamma essentially talks about 
uh, our experience in terms of uh, yolks, uh, nan, and and say and say the date. So these are the things that we all experience, and in terms of daily life, then. You, we really have to have uh, self-reflections in order to apply Abhidhamma or Abhidhamma understandings um, and, and see how uh, our body and mind changes uh, given various conditions and how we react. So that kind of thing, we have to have a have some form of meditation, meditation practice so that we are familiar with this kind of changes in our body and mind. But in terms of scholarly speaking, uh, I mean in an in, in uh, academic context, uh, when we say apply Abhidhamma, then you, know, you might as well read Taomyo uh, Siyaroji's uh, Abhidhamma in daily life and, and so forth. So there are books where you can actually read about these kind of application of Abhidhamma in daily life um, in, in, in Burmese language or in English or in actually indeed uh, other languages now that Abhidhamma study is kind of spreading and, and a lot of interest um, is growing in Abhidhamma study. Uh, <coughs> thank you. Um, we have more questions. Uh, some of them are very simple. Is uh, are all the are all the seven Abhidhamma uh, texts translated by Sir Ufe Mountain? Of course not. Sir uh, Udetila and Batan Sir uh, they also translated. Sir Ushu also translated it. Um, uh, some of the questions are quite um, uh, sort of straightforward, but some of them um, they actually need some more. So I'd like to ask um, Dr. Alexander to answer, to combine some questions, uh, two or three, four questions, and answer on poly on polygram. Yes, I will. I will combine four questions into one long answer, or not so long. Uh, there is one question which is about the, hi the history, the relative chronology of different grammars that are very important. If we read the chronicles, the Sasana Wamsas of the Kombang period, the, there is, especially the, the, the Pali Sasana Wamsa, there is this uh, notion that the Sataniti was produced in Myanmar and it was sent to Sri Lanka. And the Sri Lankan scholars were impressed with the Sataniti because they had never seen anything like that before, which is probably, it might be true or not, but the question is whether the Mukamata Dipani or the Nyasa is earlier or later than the Sataniti, and I think the answer is very clear. The Mukamata Dipani is earlier. This is very clear because the Sataniti mentions the Mukamata Dipani, so it, uh, but the Mukamata Dipani does not mention Sataniti. Another thing is that not only the Mukamata Dipani, the Mukamata Dipani Tika, otherwise known as uh, Tampien Tika, that is very famous here, the Nyasa Padipa, it has many titles. Uh, it's not very well studied, but some Sayados, like Uketara from Mandalay, they have studied it, and they defend, and I agree with them, that the Sadhaniti is based on the Sampientika. So the Sadhaniti is not that original compared to other commentaries. This we will know more if we study more. There are some notions that are wrong, and we need a little bit more research. So how do we preserve this Pali tradition? Is it doing by, by doing critical editions? Actually, there are so many ways by which we can preserve that. And I think everyone should study what, what they feel that they are interested in. No one should do it simply for preservation. It should be out of interest. The digit, digitization of the manuscript, simply making pictures, taking pictures, uh, is, is good for the preservation. The study, creating reading groups with people who know Pali, maybe they can lead the reading, and then you can read text from the Tipitaka, you can read the commentaries, you can read any kind of text in Pali. Pali texts written in Myanmar, there are so many, both in Pali and, and Myanmar language. And one question is about the, the revival. What can we do uh, in order for grammar to become important again? Uh, grammar, according to the chronicles, at the time of Pagan, even women and lay people, they, they all knew grammar. 
there is one grammar allegedly written by a princess. So why the things are not the same right now? Now we have time, we have resources, we have computers, we have everything. Why, why are we not studying Pali grammar a little bit? So we could do it. The same thing that meditation has become a mass movement, grammar could become a mass movement. But what I would suggest is that we change our approach to what grammar is. Grammar doesn't mean that this is subject, this is verb. Grammar is about the literature. It's about studying interesting texts. And definitely the Tipitaka and the commentaries, texts like the Visuddhimagga, these are very important texts. These are classics, immortal texts. There's a lot of Buddhist literature and poetry. And if we learn grammar and philology and poetics, we can, we can go deeper in the understanding of these texts. So to, that's what the grammarians always say. You need the pariyatti in order to have proper patipatti, in order to have proper pativeda. But in order to have pariyatti, before that, you need grammar. So that's, I'm repeating the idea of the Burmese grammarians here. Thank you. Uh, I would like to give opportunity to um, the questions uh, which are asked in Burmese, so um, I will an answer some of them. Kriga Sero Sedila Linkara Kane Piro Meira Mekuma Nandakas Kola Miasudi Miabota now so main jacket, Yo Ananda Maya, the Mosa Winneosa. ที่ดีดอพิญญาโดกุทาวยีอบิดมาดิเพยาโหปิฏกะมโหสุจะภาติอบิดมาดิเพยาโหโหมโหติจะไขมาโตอถาวทันเพจาสิลุบาดิเพ
Narukuk ka Shin Kama Wuda Mede ha A Che Kham Brady Pinyaya Ye Asimye Brady Pinyaya Ye Naku Salaw Ma Lu Acha Mya Shiba Di Nanga Naga Asimye Brady Pinyaya Ye Snip Se Po Atwe Lu Acha Mya Go Tilo Upa Di Pheare Lueda Le Jinjo Pia Meso Ye Saji Sa Go Lulu Lala Ye Naim Po Atwe Seare Ya Kailo Pe Na Ye Na Uwa Ma ที่สาลีบ้านเจ้าเยซูบอกเราแล้วมาดีกาเทมาเบลูสูเรเอ่อแม้ทำไมดีนี่เทมาเบลูสูเรนับวิโดเอ่อตู้ดันเทมาอุ
you know, at, um, at that language, you know, at Oxford University, at the um, at the matriculation and also uh, convocation, the proceeding takes place in Latin language. People say Latin is a dead language, but uh, somehow people still use it. And Latin language has given a lot of, you know, um, um, a potency to, to, to a lot of European languages, so that's uh, another good thing. <clears throat> um, so I think I want Dr. Alex to answer. Uh, so, very briefly, on the, whether it's a dead language or not, sometimes there are some expressions, like dead language, that this implies that there is a life for a language, as if the langu a language is like a living being, but this is not necessarily so. So, we do not need to understand that the language is a living being, and actually, language is still a uh, Pali language and culture. They are not dead or alive, they are just there. Of course, they, they exist, and that's what matters. And they are there in the Pali culture itself. They are there in the Myanmar culture, because it, it is embedded in the culture. Whether we recognize it or not, it's there. The problem is that we, sometimes we do not recognize that this culture is in our culture, in our language. Like Latin language is in Roman, uh, Romance languages. There is another question about the, the scripts or the alphabet. Whether, that, whether there is a script or alphabet for Pali or not, depending on the different, different regions, Pali has been written in different scripts, so that, that is the case and that is not a problem. Even one script, as you can see in the dictionaries, there is an evolution for every script. There is a discipline, an academic discipline that studies scripts, which is called paleography, and paleography is the study of ancient scripts. Uh, you, can, you can trace the, the evolution of scripts, and clearly there, there is no specific script for Pali, but there is no specific script for Sanskrit, there is no specific script for English, just anyone can write any language in different uh, writing systems. So that is not particular to Pali. Then another question is more general, is uh, if I could explain a little bit more, what do I mean when I say that grammar is not simply about phonetics and morphology but, or, or syntax, but also it's about the philosophy of language, it's about epistemology, about logic and hermeneutics. So th these are concepts that are taken from the Western culture. And I'm using them because we are speaking in English. But it's not necessary to use these concepts. There are, there are concepts in Pali that can express the same idea. But these concepts in Pali, they come from the Indian tradition. One thing that is very important in the Indian or the Indic tradition it doesn't mean Indian, the modern Indian, it means the Indian culture in general, is that the authority, the knowledge, comes from words, right? Like even the Buddha Vachana is the, the Buddha's words. So if knowledge can be accessed through words, the understanding of these words, these words become the, the material, the, our source of knowledge. So word itself, Sadda or Shabda, is a source of valid knowledge. So what do we do with that? For modern science, uh, material science, matter, what is material and tangible, that is a source of knowledge. Our sensations, whether it's hot or cold, etc., etc., this is a source of knowledge. What is visible in the naked eye or in a microscope, this is valid knowledge. This is pratyaksha or direct perception. But in the Indian tradition, direct perception is not the only means of knowledge. So in the same way that to study, I don't know, chemistry or biology, we need a microscope, and we also need some mathematical concepts to understand some uh, molecular processes and so on. To understand the knowledge that comes from words, we need grammar. So this, this is a tool. And then there are different applications of that, and that's what becomes the, the Pali grammar. So it's not simply grammar, it is also about how do you make an argument? How can you convince someone with a valid argument? This is a very, very, very important tradition in India, in the Buddhist history. Because there are great philosophers like Nagarjuna and Dharmakirti and Dignaga, especially Dignaga, who Dignaga is known for revolutionizing the way in which an argument can be produced only with three, three terms, not five. Usually they think you require five steps to produce a valid argument. He said, no need, no need five with three is enough. And then everyone was very amazed by that. This was a kind of revolution. And this is revolutionary because even if we are studying the matter, what is tangible, in the end, 
reality cannot be thought without words and ideas or panyatis. And this is what the, the Theravada teachers are telling us, that there is nothing that can be thought that has no word with it. So that they, we cannot think about anything, even if it's a material thing, even if it's hot or cold. We cannot think about anything if there is not a, a word or concept that is attached to it. Well, there should be a panyati for that. So if we, if we are in a university, here we are actually doing intellectual work or thinking, that cannot be done properly without the study of panyati. And grammar also studies concepts, the conceptual aspect. So what studies thought and how knowledge is valid. It can be valid and acceptable. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> one in Miss Putabada, you read the body and in letter it down jam. Um, I phone him a koye like I'm phone him a YouTube him a lee MBS answer a yajiva mindfulness based stress reduction and put up a dani lare um put up a day to you go through let me don't care about American and I yeah Massachusetts Institute of Technology ma thang ko ya kun sa jo ma sa kan aku ro ka pa pyan do ai bo e ri ha lo myo de na also tag do ma also mindfulness center so da de di bit han go ai ma go sit da chai lu de go let do it don let do ku ta ni ra le de shi de na de ku ka u te ma se let ko ri ka mya ma sa อาเสียอาเชมารกาตาอิสตุตมะตาราปิโอตวินกะปะตวยขอเนมันเตียโรอภิสุเนติหูโตสกาโหเลคขันบาตะลาญิ้นเบบาตะลาเลคขันบาเ
uh, is the 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 Tipitaka, uh, Pitama Pitaka is the word of the Buddha. But in terms of writing academically about Abhidhamma, so so when we write about Abhidhamma texts and and so on, it's an academic standard to state the text that you you are actually uh, uh, referencing the sources. So. When you look at uh, Abhidhamma literature as, as a literary text, then you have to mention uh, which periods and, and, and that kind of thing. And that's the standard thing. And whether you believe or not, um, it, it doesn't come into that academic dialogue. But the, the job of the scholar is to give full, accurate references. And that's, I would recommend that we all do that, okay? Um, another one is about applying Abhidhamma. I think uh, our uh, Oswald Stiaro has already mentioned that, so I will answer that. The, um, the next question is, what, what is the importance of Abhidhamma knowledge uh, for in, in relation to meditation, Vipassana meditation and mindfulness movement? Well, when we actually look at uh, Lady Seattle and, and his meditation practice and his writings, we can clearly see that Seattle G is using a lot of Abhidhamma understanding and Abhidhamma texts. And, and it's a similar uh, kind of approach in terms of Mahasi tradition, right? So ma the, the, the link between Abhidhamma and Vipassana is very strong. And, and the point that I would like to highlight, and I didn't get a chance to mention in my presentation, was that although when we look at um, the, uh, what we call the rise of uh, Vipassana movement and, and the spread of Vipassana meditation, not just in Myanmar and, and throughout uh, different countries, what we see is that there's a the, there's a lack, uh, the, the Abhidhamma study is lacking behind uh, uh, Vipassana uh, practice and the study of Vipassana and so on. My, what I would say is that we are lacking behind in terms of Abhidhamma study and, and the text because in Myanmar, which is the, 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 the which holds the, the the key to Abhidhamma study, like because we had Siaji Upe Mountain and so on, who are expert in many different areas, we we have been kind of in a way failing to uh, fulfill, you know, fill their their shoes. We have failed to do what they did, and that's why we are lacking behind in terms of Abhidhamma study, and. When we look at the writings of Siaji uh, Ushui for example, his writing actually draws a lot from Abhidhamma. Abhidhamma, not just Abhidhamma Pitaka, but also different range of Abhidhamma literature. And his writing goes beyond description. What I see uh, in Myanmar these days when people write about Abhidhamma as research paper, they describe things. We, we, they describe to the extent that they might end up writing the whole Abhidhamma uh, text out. <laughs> uh, but what the earlier scholars did was they, they thought, they, they were thinking in terms of the main argument of a paper, and then they were drawing on different range, range of texts and sources and trying to synthesize. And that's very, uh, that is a very useful approach and that's the way that we, I hope that we would be actually moving forward in terms of Abhidhamma study. Another question is, how can Abhidhamma knowledge help us uh, when we are studying uh, neuroscience? 
The neuroscientists, uh, especially those who work on um, mindfulness-based, uh, you know, stress reduction and all those uh, uh, different strands of research that coming out from uh, mindfulness-based uh, movement, um, for them, a BDMA study is very important, and they are beginning to realize how important a BDMA is, because like our um, Oxford Sierra said, a BDMA study, uh, a BDMA talks about the mind, and they have been doing that for thousands of years, and they do it in a very detailed and systematic way, so that by having that kind of knowledge, the scientists can come up with different tools and different ways of kind of understanding how our brains work, the chemical trans transmissions and, and so on, and the effect of meditation on um, our body and mind. And, and I think uh, an understanding of abidema and, and, and the, the richness of abidema uh, I hope, you know, we all can realize that. Um, just one personal question in your bummies. <laughs> uh, um, I've got one question uh, about uh, how I switch from uh, business studies to, to, to Buddhist studies. <laughs> อ่ามาบาจองเอ่อบิสเนสฟรีมาดมาบายโกบาจองปล่องเลไลท์ดาเลยเปลือกอะแคแคริงเนี่ยตื้อจงแกเลยเอ่อเปียวๆไปโลบ
เอ่อปิฏฐกะตุมหงโหมะมาลุปะตะพะนะเนี่ยหาดูฤทธิ์พัฒนามะเลยพระพิสุสุโรอมโพยเนติละชินเนี่ยมะมาสะเนี่ย
He served at the UN WFP headquarters in Rome, Italy for 22 years. Studying as an insurance officer in 1978, he served in a variety of increasingly more responsible management positions, including as the director of the Office of the Executive Director, the Director of Logistics and the Director of Resources and External Relations within an organization that has by that time became and remain today by far the largest UN agency and largest humanitarian organization in the world. In these various capacities, Sayaji Utomia has traveled extensively all over the world, including to some of the most challenging and critical humanitarian and conflict-ridden zones for negotiations with the involved parties, as well as to identify needs aimed at the setting of above mechanism and structures for the provision and delivery of humanitarian relief. These include Iraq, DPR, Korea, and all the countries of the Greater Horn of Africa, and many, many others. In fact, even after his retirement in 2004, Sayaji has been commissioned to lead a number of UN interagency missions to a number of these countries and areas. Prior to joining WFP, he worked in a variety of capacity in the Burma Five Star Line Corporation in Burma for nearly 15 years the last four of which as manager of the legal and insurance department. During this period, he also lectured law on a part-time basis at the University of Rangoon and was retained as legal advisor to the Ministry of Transport and Communications in Burma. Since his return to continue to spend his retirement in Django in October 2016, he had been invited to serve on a number of presidential commissions and boards, including as a member of the Mondo Investigatory Commission in December 2016 and the Rakhine Advisory Board in 2017 and 18. He continues to be heavily involved with the multi-faced challenges posed by the complex situation in Rakhine today. In addition, Sayaji is concurrently an independent director with Yoma Bank as well as with the new Yangon Development Company. Sayaji graduated from the University of Rangoon with bachelor degrees in commerce, become in law BLN from King's College University of London with a master's degree in law LLM as well as an associateship diploma by examination ACII from the Charter Insurance Institute of the United Kingdom. May I kindly invite Sayaji for the to deliver closing remark. Most uh, venerable Adira, uh, Sierra and venerable members of the Sangha, respected scholars, dear friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Alome Mingalawa. I am extremely honored to be here today, and I would like to express my gratitude to the organizers of this conference for kindly inviting me to deliver this closing speech. In the title of this conference, we read Remembering the Past and Ways Forward. As some of you may know, I myself am a graduate from this house. Every time I come back to the university, I cannot help but going down memory's lane and remembering the past, 
my happy and exciting days as a fresher more than 60 years ago when we gathered in this very hall for Freshers' Day 1959. It is somehow difficult to comprehend and absorb that years have gone by so quickly. But as the title of this conference suggests, we need to look forward. We should not look only to the past. When I see so many young faces in the audience, I can see myself in them. Of course, I'm not sure whether they can see themselves in me. But never mind, I won't hold that against them. Irrespective, there can be no denying that there is definitely a connection between generations. The succession of these generations is the bloodstream of educational institutions. Perhaps we have never met personally, but in some way or another, by being here today, we are part of the same institution. We are celebrating its 100th anniversary together. Being at this conference, therefore, is almost like meeting at the birthday party of a common friend or relative. While I know that we ought not to dwell with the past, we cannot in all honesty turn a complete blind eye to some of the dark, violent and tragic chapters and events this institution unfortunately went through many decades ago. The events of 7 July 1962, when I was in my senior year as a BCom undergraduate, came visibly, vividly to mind of friends, of hallmates whose lives were so violently cut short and the innocence and vibrancy of this great institution itself was seemingly snuffed out. And so it remained moribund and in decay for decades after that. But like the mythological phoenix of old, our university has now arisen and come back to life. So I've come back here in 2020, and I can say that the University of Yango has experienced positive changes. In the last few years in particular, and it has evolved for the better. Conferences like this one are like the spice of college life. They help us to break with our monotonous schedules. We make new friends from this country and also from abroad. Due to my professional career, I have myself been living abroad for a great many years. Much more than half my life, actually. And I have learned, so to say, in the university of life. The aim of the university is to allow students to develop their learning skills and independent thinking. How can we do this only with books? Life itself is a learning process. And the university, especially in the digital era, has to be a place of encounter of persons of human beings and not simply a staid repository of old knowledge that students will memorize and repeat without questioning it and without being questioned over it. Occasions like this conference 
are excellent opportunities for us to learn and openly but respectfully challenge and dialogue. Though not a specialist, I am an avid student of Myanmar history, with a keen interest, of course, in the affairs and developments of my country. And I very much appreciate the value in looking back to the old days to discover how education and learning strategies have changed. What I treasure the most of events like this is the fact that I can revise my own knowledge and incorporate new knowledge to my understanding of Myanmar culture. As has been shown by the distinguished participants of this conference, one does not necessarily need to, to destroy the old knowledge and to reject former views in order to adopt new points of view. It is a little bit like the simile of the elephant that we find in the Buddha's teaching. We are like a blind person who has only touched one or two parts of the elephant. We do not know the complete shape of the elephant yet. By touching other parts, we may improve our idea of what an elephant is. I believe that this is the essential mission of a university, because knowledge not only is vast, but is exploding so far and so fast that it is impossible today for one single person to learn all the available information. Not even a computer can learn it. Knowledge itself is a changing process that is growing exponentially in leaps and bounds to the point that even if the sum total of a person's knowledge increases, yet when set against the totality of the inexorably expanding worldwide knowledge at large, the individual's knowledge as a percentage of the whole is actually diminishing perennially. So here is a humbling fact for all of us literati and those aspiring to join its ranks, they will have to grapple with this reality that with every passing day, every hour, every minute, or even every nanosecond, we are all getting, relatively speaking, more ignorant. What we can learn, <coughs> learn however, is the ability to process that knowledge and information, how to judge wisely and differentiate between what is relevant and what is not. We need to be always mindful of our goal, which is for the university to accumulate and disseminate knowledge. I repeat, to disseminate knowledge and become a center for multidisciplinary excellence. This, I believe, is an essential first step before we can hope to cultivate actual wisdom amongst its denizens, so necessary to make this world a better place in the longer run. Learning is a lifelong process. It does not begin at the university, nor does it end there. And yet, the university is still considered the highest educational institution. In the West, they call the university alma mater, which is Latin for the mother that feeds the baby. Of course, the baby will grow and will no longer need the essential nutrition that comes from the mother. But without this essential nutrition, there can be no beginning of life itself. 
In celebrating the 100 years of the University of Yango, I would like to stress on this fact. The university is like our mother. The best way to repair the care and nourishment that we've got from her is to become properly educated people who can contribute towards general progress and development of the country, which will improve the standard of living and the overall quality of life of its people, which will improve the of its people, which should in turn contribute towards making this world a better place. For two days, we have been able to learn from distinguished scholars and similar events commemorating the centenary are yet to come during 2020. I would like to thank the organizers and scholars for this wonderful opportunity to learn. I know that I myself have learned a lot in this one afternoon that I've been here. I would also like to thank them for allowing me to feel and dare I say act like a student again. As some Buddhist masters say, we should never forget our beginner's mind and we should humbly and constantly strive to improve our knowledge. I sincerely trust that with this example the new generations will carry on with the task and I can foresee a brilliant future for our university and for our country. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sayaji, to your closing remark. May I invite Sayaji Utomia? May I invite Sayaji Utomia to remain on the stage <laughs> to accept certificate and present? Thank you. May I kindly request our three paper presenters to take a seat back down the stage. Please, thank you. May I respectfully invite the most venerable professor, Dr. Kema Damasami, to give the certificate and present to Sayaji Utomia and give certificates to donors and volunteers. The most venerable, please. ตัดเสียเอาตัวเนี่ยเสียตัวเนี่ยอ๋อเอาตัวเนี่ยเอาตัวเนี่ยเอาตัวเนี่ยเอาตัวเนี่ยเอาตัวเนี่ยเอาต
May I invite Uso Tin to accept the certificate of acknowledgement. After that, may I invite Uye Wen Ao and Do Wen Ma Ao to accept certificate of acknowledgement. This. Uye Wen Ao and Do Wen Ma Ao, they help from TKS Company Limited have a registration and uh, management. After that, may I invite Donanda Jo from Million, Milliana Do and Window Company Limited uh, to assess certificate of acknowledgement. <laughs> May I invite Don and Dajo from Million Door and Window Company Limited to accept certificate of acknowledgement. Now may I invite uh, University's Buddhist family to accept uh, the certificate of acknowledgement. After that, may I invite Sri Parami families to uh, Sri Parami families to accept certificate of acknowledgement. We also would like to express our heartfelt thank to Shri Barami uh, family for their contribution. Um, may I just say something that this is um, from four universities. Um, they have a, a Buddhist uh, family, so they form a Buddhist kind of society. อ่าตะกะโตจองตะกะโตจองบ้องซุงอ่าบุทธบาตามีตาซุอ่ะอ่าจองตะกะโตจองเลจองนี่ลาได้อภัยบ่าตะกะโตเลขุอ่ะบุ
Thank you very much to the university's Buddhist family uh, students for their uh, contribution. For the next volunteer group, we would like to invite Sri Barami family. So the volunteers, please come onto the stage. After that, we also would like to invite Pao Student Association and another one, Shan Literature and Culture. And we also have alumni of International School Yango. Then to be followed by Ujo Telu and Dr. Catherine Lu. Then we also have Nyama Nangan Yejang Jagato Bauda Bada Ate. For the next group, may I invite Shan Literature and Culture Group to please come forward after this. Shan Student Group. ก็อาเสียรอเนี่ยตะบวยใหญ่ชนเลยทุกคนพี่บาเลยอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่
Now may I invite alumni of May I invite alumni of International School Yango to accept certificate of acknowledgement. May I invite Ujo Telu and Dokitrin Lu to accept certificate of acknowledgement. Now may I invite Seiya uh, and Associate Company Limited to accept uh, the certificate of acknowledgement. Uh, may we once again invite Uye Wen Ao and Zhao Wen Ma Ao from TKS Company Limited to please come forward. TKS Company has been very active participation in registration processes and preparing, making uh, many preparations to make this conference a success. So please accept our heartfelt appreciation. Celebiro, Chow Yet Kunayet Conference Nayeta Gala Balo, Coffee Break Ma, Aemianet, Coffee Net Momia, Ludanet, Lucky Seven Forty Nine Street Ma, Uang Dura, 
So um, these these are the donors for the coffee break for both in this event. They have offered coffee and snacks for the both conference days. Who are Tura and Dog Hintemo from Lucky Seven Forty Nine Street, Yango. So this is the lunch donors for Seattle, Doshwe U and family from Shwe U Yasute Jewelry Shop. So this is the uh, Miliana Door and Window Group Company Limited, Donanda Joe and um, Ujolin family. So this is the Dean's family. Millionato and Window Group Company Limited go pay ko apare. ตาตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะตะต
Uh, may I invite Dr. Dr. Zindu Kai to receive a certificate of acknowledgement? Uh, for being the MC. Dr. Zindu Kai, a Master of Ceremony from the first day event. For the next, may I also invite Dr. Mia Tanda Ao, uh, who is the MC for today's event. Thank you very much, Siama, for making, um, for running this program smoothly. <laughs> Last but not the least, may I also call upon Ms. Nan Nguyen Thuy from Shan State Buddhist University for being an MC and being offering a helping hand uh, to make this conference a success. We would like to uh, express our heartfelt thanks to Rector Seadov for presenting the uh, Certificate of Appreciation to the donors and the volunteers and the MCs. Now may I invite SSPU or Sangha and lay person to take a group photo on the stage. SSPU has been very active in making this event a very successful. So this is time for SSPU to please come forward, um, professors, lecturers, teachers, and all the students and all the volunteers to please come forward the stage. So all the SSPU members are warmly welcome on the stage. Who are me? Donan Lang Liang. Who are you? Donan Kam No.
ဆက်လက်ပြီးစရိုက်မြရှင်ခရုဖိုတိုရိုက်ကူးရန်အတွက်စင်ပြင်ပေါ်သို့ကြောက်ပေးပါရင်ပန်ကြာပါရှင်စ
ಹಾಡು